So welcome to the fresh episode of our story on photoelectric effect and uh, we are at a junction. So far we talked about these scientists working or doing experiments on photoelectric effect by which Hertz accidentally discovered that yes if UV light falls on uh, metal then it uh, ejects negative electricity then Hallwax confirmed that in his own way and we almost reproduced that experiment of Hallwax in this course and then J.J. Thompson who showed that the cathode rays in the vacuum tube and these uh, electrons which are coming out because of this UV light they are the same by measuring E by M and then uh, Stoleto doing some quantitative measurements on this photoelectric effect coming out with the result that the current coming from this metal that means the number of electrons coming from this metal is proportional to the intensity of the light which is falling on that like that and then uh, of course the great experiment by Lennart where uh, very carefully he makes measurements and comes out with uh, an extremely important result that the speed of the electrons which are coming out of the metal does not depend on the intensity of the UV light that is falling on it together with uh, many other results that we had discussed. Now in all these experiments that we have described so far the focus was on the electrons which are coming out. So if you have a metal and then light falls here this is your UV radiation and then uh, electrons are coming out because of this electrons are coming out and these studies are basically focusing on the electrons electrons are coming out how many electrons are coming out per second what is that photo current how it depends on intensity what is the speed of these uh, these these things which are coming out uh, these are same as that uh, thing which comes out from the cathode in a vacuum tube all these studies are focused on the electrons now einstein albert einstein in 1905 focuses on the light itself focuses on the light itself develops a theory of light what light is what is the character of light and how this light interacts with matter theory of that now once that theory is formulated then with that what should be the characteristics of these ejected electrons that he works out from the theory and then shows that whatever experiments uh, have been done they are consistent with that so this theory is uh, seems to be okay that's the kind of thing so the focus of Einstein is on the character of this light which is impinging on this metal not on the electrons which are ejected from that character of light itself he works out that this should be the characteristics of the ejected electrons and shows that yes whatever experiments have been done they are uh, consistent with this theory so let us today in this talk in this episode to let us talk on uh, light itself if i go in details it will take another series of many many lectures on this uh, light thing because this history is also very old in uh, indian context uh, there are several philosophies in indian system and one is nyaya vaisheshika actually nyaya is uh, your logic and Vaisheshika is uh, the structure of materials and space and time, physical sciences, chemistry, physics, like that. So, and then in, later on, this Nyaya and Vaisheshika merged into one called Nyaya Vaisheshika. And then a uh, person called Watsayan and others also others also but prominently was sign and this is I'm talking of around say 600 years current time okay remember all these experiments are in the uh, 19th century <laughs> okay so these experiments are 19th century and what we are saying is around 600 CE 
and there uh, he describes they describe what light is what is the construction of light constituent of light and they are very interesting thing they say that there is a stream of particles but not of atomic or molecular molecular structure in vishishina they talk at length about atoms and molecules and how atoms combine to form molecules and how different uh, proportions of of atoms different kinds of atom can make different kind of materials just by numbers okay so there are elements and then different atoms different materials will have different elements will have different kind of molecules combined together to form molecules so all that chemistry is there what what is the effect of heat heat will first dissociate molecule into the atoms and then those atoms will recombine in some uh, another uh, proportion and another uh, structure and the material will have different properties all those things are discussed in vaisheshika in great detail although we don't find any reference to experiments but somehow they have uh, the the conclusions or the description is available is documented is still available they might have done experiments to reach this conclusions but those are not available as of as of now so they are talking of uh, this thing means they know that light does not have that material particle it's not like hydrogen oxygen nitrogen it doesn't have a material particle it doesn't have mass but then yes there is discrete a discrete the small small particles which makes us a stay and then it goes with inconceivable speeds all right very high speeds then they talk of uh, light or these light particles these particles going through interatomic spaces in the materials so if you have glass or, or water why it is transparent why light can cross through because in these materials they go through that interatomic spaces so that kind of descriptions are all there and where they don't find these interatomic space uh, spaces in good number those things are opaque so transparent translucent opaque all these things and if they reflect through the atomic surfaces because if you have interatomic spaces you also have atoms so if light falls on the surface of that atom then it reflects so that is how they explain the phenomena of refract this reflection so several properties are, are described uh, in this so it is around 600 see so it starts from there and uh, we, it, it gets uh, changed uh, every now and then and new and new things are coming still they are they are coming people are doing excellent research on optics and so on but i will mention here two things that we study as a students when we are in the schools and especially in the lower classes say class 8 class 7 or so we are taught that light goes in straight lines so from there the chapter on light starts in in our class 6 7 8 type of syllabus light these are our schools junior schools okay and for that uh, the very famous uh, activity which uh, textbooks ask the students to do is to take three card boards all right not two not four three card boards place them parallel to each other 
and then put holes in them and on one side you have a candle and other side you have an eye okay so this eye can see this candle flame only if the three holes are in one straight line otherwise it does not see so that's the proof okay that uh, light goes in straight lines and then talk of uh, shadows so if you have uh, some structure somewhere and then if you have a light source then on the other side you have the same structure on this uh, on this thing shadow this is shadow here and then the other places it is, is, uh, it is uh, bright but if the, the source has some uh, size then uh, you have a lower intensity on here and more intensity here and so on a uh, special name for it and then we call it prachaya and upchaya <laughs> okay, and all those things are to show that light goes in straight lines but when we come to college when we come to college what we are taught light does not go in straight lines if there are obstacles like this or openings like this right here it is opening rest is all open and this is opening small opening here rest is all open open and here you have some obstacle so what we are told in colleges once we come to class 12 or or college we are told that light does not go in straight lines when they meet openings or obstacles okay if you have a small opening here and a panel beam of light comes monochromatic one color what happens class 7 textbook will say that all right very good you will have a bright patch here and rest all will be dark rest all will be dark but the college the college textbook will say that All right, you have a bright thing, not of the same size, but uh, maybe depending on the distance, maybe much bigger than this. So your bright can extend from here to here, possibly. Okay, so if your bright extends, that means perhaps this parallel beam becomes diverging beam. This becomes a diverging beam, so it bends. It bends. But still, it goes in straight lines. But uh, the more interesting thing is, this whole thing is not dark. This whole thing is not dark. You have dark here. You do have dark here. But then after that, you again have bright. So the light is going. Light is going in this direction. The light is going in this direction. light is going in this direction but light is not going in this direction light is going in this direction the light is going in this direction but then the light is not going in this direction and again again light is going in this direction because this is bright this whole thing is bright and this is dark and again this is bright okay and then again dark and so on so the light is not going in this direction light is going in this direction it's not going in this direction it is going in this direction so light splits in some very special parts of course uh, it says the whole thing is uh, is diffused like this It's not just one line here around them because uh, you have bright from here to here. 
but then it chooses certain paths on which it should it likes to go and there are certain other paths where it doesn't like to go so those kind of things happen here and we say that this is diffraction okay so you have phenomena a lot of scientists have studied that is it is it it's a long history if i go into that i can give another series of lectures on that on uh, the history of light itself but i will confine to uh, some specific things so you have phenomena of reflection we know the laws of reflection you have phenomena of refraction phenomena of dispersion if you have a white if you have white light and put a prism there then uh, it uh, disperses in different colors you have phenomena of diffraction you have phenomena of interference you have phenomena of polarization and so several phenomena speed of light now this diffraction this diffraction is very very important for uh, all these uh, discussions on different aspects and this was observed experimentally by one uh, italian scientist called grimaldi before it right grimaldi and uh, robert hooke so they they actually experimentally found this and documented and and uh, told that the shadows are not sharp the shadows are not sharp and at the end of the shadow you have alternate dark and bright regions and then it uh, finally goes into the openings the brightness so those kind of experiments were done and in fact grimaldi coined this word diffraction that we are using today right so that was the thing reflection everyone study refraction newton had done number of experiments number of experiments on optics that was late 70s uh, late 17th century and 1704 all right 1704 he published all his results in this book optics all the results all those experiments which he has performed in several years and then all the data and all the documentation and all the interpretation based on that was was in this in this he talks of reflection in this he talks of refraction in this he talks of this person he talks of diffraction and also interference he talks of polarization although he himself doesn't seem to have done a lot of experiments on polarization but uh, another scientist so this is newton this is newton and then uh, you have this uh, huygens christian huygens he also writes a book on optics based on uh, various experiments and uh, various observations and that was uh, sometimes in uh, in 1690 or around that around that okay now the thing is that uh, the same experiment the same phenomena the same phenomena when newton described them performed the experiment described them then he describes everything in terms of those corpuscles which are small particles small particles light is made of small small particles right that like what sign description so he uses this description and uh, with this description of this particle nature of light he describes this he describes this he describes this he described this he described this okay and uh, how he uh, explains all this diffraction interference type of phenomena 
he is either okay the whole thing is uh, in this hypothetical medium called ether that was prevalent at that time and then uh, this light which are separately they are particles separately they are called crystals small small separate separate particles but then they interact with this ether particle that the material is different your mirror is a material but an ether is still there in empty space what you call empty space air also in the between the air molecules also you have this uh, ether all that empty space is ether and ether particles they interact with light particles and they deflect it and uh, if you have a material that material can affect that ether density uh, close to its edge and because and uh, away from the edge the ether has different densities so that different density will put to different pressures and this and that that is how he somehow manages to describe uh, these uh, phenomena of interference and diffraction also in terms of corpuscles and Christian Huygens he also describes all these things and that in terms of light itself is a wave light is nothing there is nothing called particles of light it is just vibrations in ether all right just like sound is vibrations in air uh, of air molecules similarly light is nothing but vibrations uh, in those uh, ether medium and uh, just like sound is propagating like a wave light is propagating like a wave and with that he explains reflection Right, refraction that's very popular. Even today, we use that Huygens construction of secondary wavelengths. So he says that okay, if you have a, if you have a, a wave front, you have a, the surface, and if light is coming like this, then uh, that medium which carries all those vibrations and propagates that like a wave. So the same phase, particles vibrating in the same phase, that will make a surface, and that surface is called wavefront, and that will be perpendicular to this, and this wavefront will advance from here to here, here to here, here to here. So as it, be, it reaches this surface, this is let us say some, uh, uh, this, this is material. Okay, so this is wavefront, and this is light. And light propagates means what? Those vibrations which were here at certain in certain phase, now these particles or ether particles, they will be in that particular phase. So this wave front have has advanced. So that is how the wave is going, that is how the light is propagating. So that is the structure. Here you have particles, and the particles are just uh, going like balls. And here it is those vibrations in that ether medium, and when it reaches here. Then each point where it reaches becomes a source of uh, secondary wavelets and all those things, and then uh, the envelope of that, etc., etc. That Huygens construction we still use that very extensively. So with that he explains uh, reflection. He explains light going straight line if there are no obstacles, no openings, refraction, diffraction, everything, interference, diffraction, everything. And he also studied uh, polarization, especially that what we call double double refraction. There are some crystals like calcite. If you have a slab of that crystal, transparent crystal, put it on uh, some page where something is written, and you will and see from the top, you will see two images, not one. Simple glass slab will give you one image which is slightly lifted. And this will give two different images of the same object, just a rectangular slit. So it's called double refraction. That is because of uh, uh, manifestation of this polarization behavior, which is in wave. So he does uh, experiments on those and tries to explain with this uh, wave picture. And since Newton writes his book later than Huygens, he knows that. And he comments, he doesn't give any explanation, but he comments that uh, Christian's wave description of this is faulty. Okay, so those kind of things were there, and uh, it was difficult to decide whether to go with the waves or whether to go with the corpuscles because each one is explaining everything apart from this speed of light, which was not measured that time in the lab. 
all right in, in space we, we knew but in materials we did not prediction of speed of light that was different that was different the uh, wave theory of Huygens would predict that in a material when light enters in a material from air let us say in, in glass or in water its uh, speed will decrease whereas this corpuscle theory of Newton will predict that it should increase the speed should increase but since the measurement was not there so this was uh, not the deciding factor and other things were explained by each of those two pictures <laughs> so <laughs> it was a choice some people favored this wave aspect some people favored that uh, corpuscle aspect so one went with this kind of structure of light and some with that kind of structure of light and that uh, continued for almost a century almost a century this is all late 17th century and just beginning of 18th century but then uh, this entire century this debate was there and then came Thomas Young Fresnel, Fraunhofer, Airy. So these people performed experiments on the, again this diffraction and interference. So Thomas Young and then Fresnel and then Fraunhofer, Airy, people like uh, those. And those experiments somehow tilted the balance in, the, in favor of this wave theory. And finally, when the speed of light was measured in the laboratory in water, then of course so this wave theory won. All right. So then it was fully established that light is not a stream of particle. Light is not to be seen as discrete quanta, one particle of light here and then another light particle here and another light particle here. Light has to be seen like a continuous wave. So that went on for uh, another almost one century. Okay. When this uh, experiment of uh, Philip Nenard came in 1902 and Einstein came in 1905. So the very fact that the speed of electrons in photoelectric effect does not depend on the intensity that was not matching with the wave theory as such because if continuously light is coming continuously as predicted by this waves then the more energy falling per particle per electron should print that electron with more energy but, but then Leonard does something and explain it no no it's not light that energy is is given from light to the electron it's not like that light only triggers already existing energy in the electron to go out with this much of energy what are you doing here you should go out and see how the world is so light is making that triggering that is how Lena tried but then Einstein comes with a very radical very different kind of theory of light and again going into corpuscles light has separate separate quanta you can count so that uh, theory I will talk in the next episode and how it connects with the photoelectric effect.